All right, so today we're going to be talking about exponential growth functions. This is our general form. Remember, A stretches the graph vertically. The difference here is B is actually going to be a number inside our graph. H is going to translate the graph horizontally, and K is going to translate the graph vertically. So we will not have a stretch horizontally for the exponential. We use a table of values to plug it in, but the problem is, is this is the graph, this is the parent function B of X. Now if that was a 2, we'd plug in 2 these values, and it'd be 2 to whatever power is here, and we get our values. Reference points are always going to be 0, 1, and 1, comma, B. So whatever this number is, so the first power is always going to be 1. Our asthmatope will always be at y equals k. Since we have no k here, that means our asthmatope, the line it can't cross, is the x-axis. Domain, the x values go left and right. They continue forever, so it goes from negative infinity to positive infinity. And writing in that in interval notation is negative infinity, comma, positive infinity, because we can't say exactly where it stops and starts. Our range. Our y values are only above the x-axis, so that means that y has to be greater than 0. So in interval notation, it is 0 to positive infinity. So we're going to actually look at graphing a few of these and what the shifts in the translations do, and then we're going to write the equation from the graph. So going here, we have this function, and remember, the parent function is y equals b to the x. I'm having problems seeing that on the screen, so I'm going to write that in a little darker. y equals b to the x. First of all, the domain is going to be what? What do you think it might be? Okay, I'll give you a hint. It's going to be the all reals. So the domain, your x values, x such that x is an element of the reals, and x goes from negative infinity to positive infinity. That means our interval notation, negative infinity, positive infinity. Now, I know that the directions say state the domain and range and identify new values of the reference point and the asymptote and graph the function. I honestly like graphing the function first and then stating the domain and range because that visual of the picture helps me out. I know my asymptote is equal to the k value. Our k value is negative 6. So I know at negative 6, I have an asymptote. That means my line is going to be either above it or it's going to be below it. Now, given that B is a positive value, it's going to go above it. So it should look like a curve going up this way. We're going to find some exact points in the reference. But that also means that my Y value is going to be above negative 6. So my range y, such that y is an element of the reals, y is greater than negative 6. It won't actually touch negative 6. So the negative 6 is the bottom point, and the top point is positive infinity. So reference point. This value is a stretch on the vertical according to our chart and according to what we know a is. So that means because it's a vertical, it gets multiplied to the y value. So we're going to multiply this by 4. This 2 is a translation horizontally. And remember, it's opposite because the equation says minus. So that means I'm moving 2 units to the left for the x. So I'm going to subtract 2 to the x. And this says I'm also going to subtract 4 from that y value after I multiply it by 2. So let's look at where our new points would be. 0 minus 2 is negative 2. 1 times 4 is 4, minus 6 is negative 2. Then we're going to do the same thing here. Now, notice this y value is missing. If you remember back over here, our reference point is 1, comma, b. So my b value is 2. 2 to the first power is going to be simply 2. So we'll have to fill that in each time. So again, this should not be 0. This should be a 1. 1 minus 2 is negative 1. And then 2 times 4 is 8. Minus 6 makes it 2. And I'm going to graph my points. So 
negative 2, negative 2 is here. And negative 1, positive 2 is here. Now I know my curve goes up like a ski slope, backward. So if we're climbing the mountain, it's going to go like this. Now, we should have values that get really close to this and then come up and through the points that are referenced. And check your graph, your domain. It goes left and right. Never stop. Keep going that way. And my range is above negative 6, so it looks like my domain and range is correct. My asymptote is correct. I have my reference point. So there's my graph. We're going to look at another one. We have this value here. The difference with this one is the A value has a negative on it. So that means we should be doing some flipping. And if you remember back to what A does, it stretches the graph vertically, which means it's going to flip on the x-axis. So keeping that in mind, going down here to my reference points, it's 0, 1, and it's 1, B. B happens to be 2 again. I'm going to graph this first to get an idea of what it looks like. So I need to get my asymptote in there. Y equals, my k value is 1. So at positive 1, I have an asymptote. There it is. Now, going to my reference point. This negative 3 gets multiplied to the y value. This 2 gets added to your x because it's a horizontal translation and this 1 gets added to the y. So 0 plus 2 is 2. 1 times negative 3 is negative 2. Negative 2 plus the 1 gives me negative 1. 1 plus 2 is 3. And 2 times negative 3 is negative 6. Plus 1 is negative 5. So I'm going to graph my points. I have a positive 2, negative 1. A positive 3, negative 5. So remember, it's flipping it over the axes because of this negative. So that means I come from up here, and I'm going along, and I'm close to there, but not quite. Whoops, kind of missed that point. Third time's charm, right? And there's a picture of my graph. Now, I have my reference points, my asymptote. I haven't done my domain and range yet because I wanted to look at the graph. My domain is going left and right forever. So the domain is still x, such that x is an element of the reals, negative infinity, less than x, less than positive infinity. And my interval notation is negative infinity to positive infinity. My range. My y values are below positive 1 which means my range is going to be y such that y is an element of the reals, but y is less than positive 1. And if I write that in interval notation, that is simply, it starts at 1 and goes to negative infinity. And so we always start with the lowest value, which is negative infinity, positive 1. And that in a nutshell is how we graph them. And you'll get more chance to practice this tomorrow. We're going to now look at not just graphing them, but actually writing the equation from the graph. So we have this picture, and notice it's got fractions. I know how you guys love fractions. So we are going to write the equation from the function that will produce the given graph using the specified value of b. We're going to verify the second reference point is on the graph of the function, and then we're going to state domain and range. Okay, the easiest thing to figure out here is your asymptote, because your asymptote is drawn. That's 1 right there. So my asymptote is 1, which means since the asymptote equals k, k is the 1 value. Okay? Now, we have to figure out a and h, and I've kind of written the outline. So first things first, find your k value, then look for a and h. Now, I already know what B is. B, they tell me it's 2. They have to give you that. Because remember, we're going to write it back in this form of f of x equals a times b to the x minus h plus k. Fill in the values that we know. 
So the first point, the reference point, is 0, 1, always. And it's being moved to negative 1 third, negative 1 third. Well, to go from 0 to negative 1 third, what h value did we add? Well, it would be negative 1 third. We need to now find a. a is a little bit more complicated because we have to take our equation, plug in what we know, and we're going to use our second coordinate point to find it. So here, first point was there. From there, h has to be that difference that we moved it. To find a, we're going to plug in values. So we know that we have, so far, we have a, we know that b is 2 because they gave it to us. We know x. We know h is minus negative 1 third. Be careful that double negative. And I know k is 1. And I know this is f of x. I'm going to clean things up just slightly. So I get f of x equals a times 2 to the x plus 1 third plus 1. Now, I'm going to plug in my values for my points. It doesn't matter which point you use because it's an x and a y value. So we can plug in this value here, and I like this value because that makes this become a 0, and 2 to the 0 is just 1. So we're going to plug in negative 1 third equals a times 2 to the negative 1 third plus 1 third plus 1. <coughs> Once you substitute the value in, you should end up with just a as your variable. So coming back up here, I have negative 1 third equals Let's see, a times 2 to the 0 plus 1. 2 to the 0 is just 1. So we get negative 1 third equals a times 1 plus 1. We have to subtract the 1 both sides. Common denominators, well, negative 1 can be rewritten as negative 3 over negative 3. That means that a is equal to negative 4 thirds. Okay? So a is negative 4 thirds. Back here to our equation, we have, oh, let's see, I'm running out of room. Can everybody see over here? So I get the equation f of x equals, we found a is negative 4 thirds times 2 to the x plus 1 third plus 1. There's our equation. They did ask us to verify this reference point is on the graph and then state domain and range. Okay, verifying the second point is on the graph just simply means plugging this in for x and y and seeing if it comes out true. Or just plugging this in for x and seeing if we get this as our answer for y. So checking that, you have f of x equals negative 4 thirds, 2 to the 2 thirds plus 1 third plus 1. So we get negative 4 thirds. 2 thirds plus 1 third is just 3 over 3, which is just 2 to the first power plus 1. So we're going to multiply. This is a whole number. So we get negative 8 over 3 plus 1. 1 can be rewritten as 3 over 3, so that's negative 5 over 3, which is what their y value was. So it all checked. We're good. We need our domain and range. So the domain... What do you think? What has it been this whole time? Negative infinity, positive infinity. And our range goes from positive 1 and below. So y is less than positive 1. So we're going from negative infinity to positive 1 on our interval notation. And that is, in a nutshell, dealing with the equations. Hopefully you're seeing patterns to what we've been doing.